Welcome to segment three of Citizens Forum being filmed on Wednesday, August the 28th in the beautiful Memorial Arena in downtown Victoria. I want to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes it all happen. Uh, this is being filmed on August 28th, so the big news in the world, I guess, right now is uh, the American potential attack uh, on Syria. Um, our guest is uh, Mazin Al Nahawi, and Mazin, you have a connection with Syria. Maybe we can start with that. Okay. Uh, first of all, my mother is Syrian. I was born in Damascus in 1968. I graduated from the High Institute of Drama and Literature in Damascus in 1996. So I spent, and then I left in that year. So I spent 28 years in Syria. But originally, I am a Palestinian refugee because my family were expelled in 1948 from Palestine to after the creation of the uh, Israeli occupation state in Palestine. So, and even we go farther in history, uh, my family left Syria in the middle of 15th century, an area now called Dar'a, maybe many people heard about it, it's south of Damascus, to north of Palestine, a city called Safad. And like you are moving from Nanaimo to Victoria, but now we have now two different states. So the long history, I mean, and um, I mean, as I mentioned, it's in, in the middle of 15th century that before Christoph Columbus put his dirty feet on the, on the shore of the New World. So I have a long, I mean, my family lived in that region for a long time. So when your family moved in the 1500s from Syria to Palestine, it was the same nation? It, Palestine, it was like a kind of a province. Like in, uh, 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 they used to be called Greater Syria, but at that time, the Ottoman were occupying the whole region for almost 400 years but did not divide that region to a state. It was still, I mean, people moving their land, I mean, freely, I mean, like, but uh, uh, until the, uh, the beginning of the 20th century, when the colonial states like Britain and France, and especially after the discovery of the oil in the region, so they start to divide the region based on that ge geopolitics issue. I mean, based on what is the oil, how to transfer it, and they, uh, if we go back to history, we, in 1916, the agreement between France and England, Cyclos Pico, it's mainly to divide Syria to four states, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, and Jordan. And in 1917, as I mentioned in earlier show, that we had Belfort Declaration, which promised European Jews to give them Palestine as a homeland for them, regardless what the wishes of the Palestinian, I mean, the native of the land. But What's happening now in Syria, we, you cannot separate it from that long history. I mean, it's a long line of history. You cannot really understand now if you don't see what happened in the past. The same colonial power who divided Syria before, now coming back under the name of humanitarian intervention, also to do more damage for the region. As you heard lately about the chemic um, attack and which all the Western media talking all the time about it as complete positive that the Syrian government which did it. But for anyone with uh, some common sense and some little bit of awareness of th the old American scenario should figure out and like for example uh, we know that the invest uh, investigation uh, uh, United Nations was sending a group to investigate this issue. So why the Syrian government, just before that group come to Syria, was to use a chemical weapon? I mean, it's not the time for them if they use That's it. That's right. If, if you go back just a few weeks, there was, a, there was an invitation to the United Nations to send crews to Syria to look for any use of chemical weapons, right? And then on the very day when they finally arrived, in Syria, that was the day when we are told the Syrian government chooses to use chemical weapons or gas weapons and, and give them exactly the information that the United States needs to, in, to attack Syria. That is bizarre. It I makes mean, no sense. I mean, any somebody with common sense, I mean, even if they want to use that, this is not the right time for them to use it. I mean, they don't want to create I mean, lawlessness and uh, more uh, distraction, I mean, more trouble. They try to contain the issue. It's not of their benefit 
to go and do such a thing like this. But it's very important to, to know that the Russian provided the United Nations with images and satellite videos about where the rocket came from and what kind of rocket. And it's not the first time. Actually, this is the third incident when the Russian provide images about what's going on, on the ground. Meanwhile, the Western power completely saying the opposite without providing any evidence to support their claims. So but you're saying that the Russians then are providing the United Nations with evidence that what the Americans are saying is not It's a homemade the rocket. It was coming out of the, the so-called the rubbles area. And actually, the rubble themselves posted many video about having uh, an, uh, using Kibbing or uh, I mean, uh, um, tr tried to post it on YouTube with their channel that they are trying to use these chemical swapping, but it's these videos or this information completely hidden. But the, uh, the uh, just the fact that they are not mentioning that the Russian providing images, the same thing about the first incident when they also, in Aleppo before, three, four months ago, also they used the same story about chemical weapons. And the same thing, the Russian provided evidence and images, meanwhile the American did not provide anything in spite of their saying, no, they believe that the Syrian government did that. Now regardless if the Syrian government did that, I have really trouble seeing that the United States, the the most criminal state in the world who use chemical weapons and nuclear weapons and the first country to use the uh, when the Hiroshima and Nagasaki to dare and come out and talk about other states using chemical weapons it's beyond hypocrisy I mean you don't need to talk my word about how the US is a criminal just find out about the declassified information the CIA give Manning just um, met, he got 35 years for um, providing information which the CIA 60 years later will provide us with. I mean, it's the pattern here where the state is knowingly doing crime after crime after crime and later their uh, 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 intelligence service tell you, yes, they did that and that and that. And nobody make a connection between the new lies they are doing and the old lies. So just look, like also uh, the World Health Organization is supposed to provide some statistics about the depleted uranium the, the American use in Iraq. Okay, so the World Health Organization is, is providing information they now. They want to provide that, but this information now have been, been held now. They are holding this information because imagine to talk about what damage the American did spreading cancer and making you know, the whole Iraq a wasteland by using these deployed uranium, using all this chemical, massacring people. Iraq lost a million and a half people. That, on the standard of the American, it's like America, US losing around 30 million people. Comparison, I mean, imagine if the US lost between 25 to 30 million people. I mean, this is what Iraq lost from 20 million people they lost at least one and a half million four to five million people been displaced in Iraq I have no idea how they can convince the American customers <laughs> and consumers that to in order to help some country you need to go and kill a million and a half from their population destroy all their land for a humanitarian intervention this is beyond, I mean, I have no idea how they manage to establish kind of a, per, I mean. A well, and we see it happening again right now. It's the same old story. It's as if the media, the CBC, CTV, I haven't watched the Americans, but our own Canadian media is like telling us, forget about the weapons of mass destruction that we used in 2004 to, or 2003 to attack Iraq, the weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist, forget all about that, because now we're going to give you exactly the same story with poison gas, and we're going to use that story to attack another country. As if the Americans, the American government, it's not the American people, as if the American government cares about people being killed. I mean, 
as you say, it's yeah, hypocrisy they, beyond belief. They care so much to a point that they give the Iraqi during the Iranian war a chemical weapon. Why would you give a state in a war chemical weapon? To use it for cooking? <laughs> no, I don't think so. They give it to the Iraqi to kill Iranian with it. And later, use that incident to go and attack Iraq. It is brilliant, so, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, the same thing. They brought the Mujahideen to Afghanistan. They brought Afghanistan to a complete disaster state. And then later, they went and they talked about the war on terrorism. They created that terrorism. They used it everywhere. I mean, I don't know any state on earth really did the damage the U.S. did from the way, I mean, like lately, they, the CIA even admitted that they overthrew Musaddaqi in Iraq, in Iran. Musaddaqi was a secular, democra uh, democratically elected at that time. They overthrew it because he wanted to keep the wealth of Iran to the Iranian people. And they brought the Shah to open Iran to multinational corporations to come and take whatever they are. So if, if, if the world want to really have a coalition, a, a coalition to find tourism, they need to look first at the U.S. The U.S. need to be the one who need to be dismantled because none the Syrian, none the Iraqi went around the world and kill as much as the American government. If anybody want to sanction, or if anybody want to close an embassy, it's the U.S. need to be their embassy closed and be sanctioned until they stop involving in other people, in other countries, in, uh, in business. And yeah. uh, you know, and, and watching it happen, the Harper government is, is, couldn't be more corrupt and complicit in all of this. They, the Harper government has no interest in, in honestly informing the people of Canada what's going on and then finding out what we want and then doing that. I mean, he's just, he's ready for war, which going back just a couple of years to what happened in Libya when NATO attacked Libya for basically the same reason as they're now attacking Syria, um, a Canadian general led the NATO attack in our name and they basically destroyed the foundation of that country. Libya is now like a failed state. It's run by armed militias. Um, it was a very prosperous country and it's been brought to its knees by another terrorist U.S. attack. It's funny how uh, can we stop them? How the U.S. kind of play the democratic game better than Canada. I mean at least in the U.S. they are trying to talk about if you want to attack, you want to talk in the Congress yeah. about, <laughs> I mean, they are, they are doing the crime, but at least they are frame it in a kind of democratic kind of way. Here we have the Canadian army involving and participating in all that without the Canadian people has any say in it, without the parliament know what's on the ground. I mean, just we hear what the CBC tell us, which is a bunch of lies, like the F Fox News, uh, I mean, and uh, and people don't question, I mean, again, like why Syrian would use the chemical weapon in the day where the United Nations coming for inspection? Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, a, it's just simply questioned. But again, we don't have the citizen who question, have a critical mind to, I mean, w when you have all the media talking repeatedly about this issue from one hand, on the other hand, deliver to you very stupid issue like Michael Jackson or other issue as real issue to think about. I mean, you can expect later that yeah. the, public, the public won't really, I mean. Well, uh, there was a few letters to the editor about this issue in the Globe and Mail this morning. And those letters were just saying, you know, we don't believe what we're being told. I, I think a lot of Canadians have had enough don't believe it anymore, know there's something wrong. The problem is we have no way of connecting with each other because the other side basically has ownership of all the media. And, and I mean, the main things I've been watching uh, a little bit of is CBC and CTV. And their national news is just beating the drum for war. They, they just seem uh, pushing for war. It makes... Yeah, militarizing and pushing for war, this is so good for the American business. I mean, one of the beasts of the news saying that 
the United States is going to increase its, its assistance to the Israeli apartheid state because the surrounding country has more weapons now. They are selling Egypt and the puppet states in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the Gulf puppet state, they are selling them weapons from one hand. Then come back to, to tell you that, you know, the surrounding country has more weapons, we sold them more weapons, so we, has to we have to increase the assistance for the Israeli and I think state. It's like pushing the whole region yeah. for war, more war, more war. And, and I think your, your, your underlying point is that all of this is being done for oil and natural gas and pipelines and power. And uh, the combined corporation who building all these weapons, I mean, I'm sure they are happy with They're all very happy. Now yeah. you sell the weapon to Iraq, I mean, to Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all this money goes to the weapon corporation company. From then the American government turned to the, uh, to the public and told them, look, we need to use your taxes to help the Israeli apartheid state to be sure that it's, it's safe there. I mean. So the whole creation of the Zion state in the Middle East and arming all the surrounding area, it's just to keep the region on a, in, a, in a war state for a long, long time. And the poor, poor people who live there, the millions and millions and millions of people who have to deal with depleted uranium, I mean, the, the price that the Iraqi people and the Libyan people and others have paid for the use of depleted uranium in their country is, uh, there's no word for it. It's I agree completely. There is no word to we'll talk about the crime of the U.S. and Iraq. That country completely dismantled. That country was used to have many benefits for people. I mean, basic things from free health, free education. N secular state. There is no sectarian conflict. No, it's every day there is bomb in Iraq. Every single day, it's a failed state. And but again, the oil industry there, it's working perfectly and nice, and no problem with that. So again, it's just yeah. follow the money. You would know about the <laughs> Mazin Al Nahawi. Thank you very much for doing this. Thanks for watching this uh, this day's Citizens Forum, and. Be very careful believing what the corporate media tells you. They're, they're not our friends. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.